Hi there, so you may have seen this already. There's a CVPR paper called Pulse. And what it does is it's a method to upsample a pixelated image in a way that makes it look realistic, but also that the again downsampled variant matches the original downsampled image. So it's kind of a cycle consistency loss uh, together with a GAN. And all in all, it's a method to demonstrate how you could do this. Now this has been trained on this face data set among others. There was a user, Bomzi, that made this into a collab so people could try it out and tweeted this out. And as you can see, it works pretty nicely. It gives pretty nice results on this particular data set. But of course, uh, people started playing around with it and gave fairly funny results like this or that. That gets more into the horrible category, these. So you can see um, these ones I particularly like, Trump uh, being made into the little child. So you can see as soon as you get away from the original kind of data set modality, you are going to get these results that are off. And people started to notice that, so here you input Barack Obama and what comes out is a fairly standard Caucasian person. Someone tweeted out saying, this image speaks volumes about the dangers of bias in AI. I guess here is where the entire story starts. So Jan Lecun weighs in and says, ML systems are biased when data is biased. This face-up sampling system makes everyone look white because the network was pre-trained on Flick Face HQ, which mainly contains white people pics. Train the exact same system on a data set from Senegal and everyone will look African. So this is pointing out why this happens, namely because the data set is mainly Caucasian people. So the results of upsampling are going to be mainly Caucasian people. I mean, this is like a straightforward explanation of why we're seeing what we're seeing. But of course, this was not okay. And here is where the piling starts. As an interjection, we have to talk about bias in machine learning. Technically, there is a statistical notion of bias, which has a very rigorous definition. And there is the societal definition of bias. And these two things, even though they're the same word, they're totally different. A machine learning system mainly consists of four different parts. There is the data set, the model, the loss function, and the optimization procedure. Statistical bias means whenever the model the loss or the optimization procedure lead to a situation where the outcome doesn't reflect the distribution of the data that you input. This, for example, is achieved when you regularize your model, which means that you put some prior knowledge onto the model, you introduce bias, and therefore you choose to not accurately represent your data distribution, regularize it to a more biased distribution that in turn has lower variance. We know this as the bias variance trade-off. It's, it's actually very simple, right? You, you have the Ferraris and the Lamborghinis, and you want to make a model that predicts the accident probability. Now, it just so happens that the Ferrari drivers are a bit more reckless and they do slightly higher accidents. And now I train my logistic regression and it tells me, okay, 60, 40, cool. But now I train my logistic regression with an L1 penalty. And I say, I want my model to be, you know, explainable. So I want it to be sparse. I want the least amount of variables to be contributing to my thing. What's the model gonna say? The model's gonna say, Ferrari drivers, bad, Lamborghini drivers, good. Societal bias in machine learning is way different. An example for this is when face detection systems work well on Caucasian people, but don't work so well faced with people from other heritages. And these societal biases are in the data set. As Jan Lecon points out here, if you change the data set, you'll change these biases. Notably, the societal biases can only be in the data set. Otherwise, you'd have to argue something like logistic regression itself has a preference for white people or something like this. Now, there is a considerable interaction effect between the two, but as Jan Lecon points out, the actual societal bias of the final system is a direct result of the bias in the data set. And he is very correct. If you train that system on a different data set, it will exhibit 
different biases. Societal bias cannot be in the other parts of the machine learning pipeline. They can serve to exaggerate or mitigate that bias in the data set, but they themselves can only be statistically biased and not societally biased. But Jan Lecoe made the terrible mistake of pinpointing the exact root cause of this problem and not addressing the I guess, wider ranging problems in the field as some people perceive it. And he shouldn't have to, right? He pretty clearly says, this is why it happens. We can solve it by swapping the data set. He doesn't say anything about anything else. Namely, he doesn't say that general bias in the field is not a problem. He doesn't say that this doesn't harm anyone. None of that. He simply suggests a solution. Jonathan Peck says, well, yes, that's the point. ML researchers need to be more careful selecting their data so that they don't encode biases like this. And Lacan responds with not so much ML researchers, but ML engineers. The consequences of bias are considerably more dire in a deployed product than in an academic paper, which is also correct. This paper was about the method, showing that this method works on this data set. Now, Sumit, um, here makes a interesting point, which I agree with, saying that today ML researchers are inadvertently powering product of a lot of non-AI companies who ignorantly start with a pre-trained BERT or ResNet or YOLO from the internet, probably ignoring the license, README and so on. Which is a valid point, right? Um, there are going to be people that take this and think, ooh, this is a face-up sampler. Cool, I can use that. Uh, without noting that this is simply an example Im implementation on an example data set. So you can argue that there might be some responsibility of the researchers right here. That doesn't make Jan Lecan not correct. But I'd still consider this to be like a fruitful discussion between individuals right here. But now we go on. This person saying, train it on the whole American population with an L2 loss and almost everyone will look white or train it on the whole American population with an L1 loss and more people might look black. Stop pretending that bias does not also come from algorithmic choices. Jan Lecan never says it doesn't, right? Lecan responds now saying, the most efficient way to do it though is to equalize the frequencies of the categories of samples during training. This forces the network to pay attention to all the relevant features for all the sample categories. And training with an L1 instead of an L2 will not even begin to solve the problem. I would pretty much argue training with an L1 loss here would exacerbate the problem because the L2 loss is much more sensitive to outliers. Charles Sutton says, serious question, why do you feel that it's important to make this point? Are you worried that people are going to start suing cycle again? And Lacan says, because people should be aware of this problem and know its cause so they can fix it. How terrible, Jan, how terrible you dare pinpoint the exact cause of the problem so that people can fix it. The correct thing to do is to point out that everything is problematic. So Tim Nigibaru says, Jan, I suggest you watch me and Emily's tutorial or a number of scholars who are expert in this area. You can't just reduce harms to dataset bias. For once, listen to us people from marginalized communities and what we tell you. If not now, during worldwide protests, not sure when. So again, I feel the argument here is that you can't simply point out that it's the dataset bias. You must point out the bigger problems, which Jan Lecun does not ever deny. He simply says this particular problem can be solved by switching the data set. Nicolas Leroux says, Jan was in my PhD jury. I am indebted for him for everything he taught me, but this constant dismissal of the harms caused directly or indirectly by the ML community is highly problematic. Where or when have I dismissed the harm caused by the ML community? I'm pointing out the cause of the harm so it can be fixed. You can't fix the harm unless you know what causes it, no? LaRue says causes of the biases are numerous, only pointing out dataset bias deflects the attention away from the other more pervasive ones that make the whole field of bias in ML. Many people try to get your attention about these issues, but you kept focus on the dataset. Because the dataset is the problem right here. He doesn't dismiss any of the other things. He simply says, here the dataset is the problem. If your problem is that it doesn't work as well for non-Caucasian people, which was never the intent of this. The intent of this was to showcase the method. I mean, ImageNet is like 60% dog species. 
And still, people train on it to showcase their image recognition techniques. No one training on ImageNet makes a claim that they have solved computer vision for all the classes in the world in a fair manner. Tim Gibru goes on saying, I'm sick of this framing, tired of it. Many people have tried to explain, many scholars listen to us. You can't just reduce the harms caused by ML to dataset bias. Doesn't do that, doesn't do it. So someone asks her, is he engaging in any ways with you? It's appalling to see that he answers to everybody but you, yet maybe there is a conversation going on in private and I don't want to jeopardize it. Note that Yann Lacan's tweet has 500 retweets, 1.9k likes and comments as far as you can scroll. To what she responds to with, yep, but I'm used to white men refusing to engage with black and brown women, even on issues of bias that mostly affect us. I mean, he literally has ignored a whole body of work by people from that demographic, hence the statement, so not surprised. I mean, in absence of the fact that an argument should be independent of the person making the argument, that is a low blow. Hard Maru says, I respectfully disagree with Jan here. As long as progress is benchmarked on biased data, such biases will also be reflected in the inductive biases of ML systems. Advancing ML with biased benchmarks and asking engineers to simply retrain models with unbiased data is not helpful. I don't disagree with you here. I don't think my tweet contradicts your statement, which it doesn't. People are reading into this because he doesn't conform to the orthodoxy of pointing out that everything and everything is problematic and simply pinpoints a particular problem, he must be thinking all the wrong things. Jeff Dean says, this is a clear example. Here is an illustration that seemingly minor choices in learning algorithms or loss can have significant effects. So bias in ML systems is about much more than just avoid data bias. ML researchers and practitioners must pay attention to these issues. And I think they are. And Lacan doesn't say anything against that. He says, as I point out in my comment to this tweet, is much more efficient to correct this kind of bias. Note that Jan Lacan actually differentiates between the different kinds of biases by equalizing the frequencies of categories of samples during training, then be hacking the loss function. Correct, because if you hack the loss function, you're trying to counter one kind of bias by another kind of bias. Meredith Whitaker says, this is very racist. And even if it recognized non-white people, it would be very racist. This is cop tech. It's designed to allow those with power to surveil and control those with less power. Diverse training sets aren't going to fix it. Advocating that we should never build these systems. And that's a discussion to be had. But let me break this to you. This isn't going to help the cops. This isn't actually giving you the face of the person that was down pixeled. This is simply going to give you the most likely face associated with that down pixeled picture, given the data set the algorithm was trained on. I don't see this whenever any machine learning algorithm does anything with faces at all. People jumping up going like, this is cop technology. Well, in line with all the broader impact statement advice, can't it also be used to find lost children from very, very bad security camera footage? And if I already mentioned that this doesn't actually give you back the person on the down sampled image, it will give you back the most likely person given the data set. So with that, I want to conclude this section. Please stop the witch hunting. Jan Lecun made a completely fine tweet here, and there's no reason why people should pile on him this hard. He doesn't dismiss any of the other problems just because he doesn't mention them. And while we all enjoy a good discussion where people disagree genuinely, it's not helpful to accuse him of things he never said or meant. I mean, where does this all lead? The result of this is going to be that small labs that don't have the resources to collect their own data sets or check for all the possible biases in their models that are reliant on the data sets that we do have, even if they are biased and flawed, will just be disincentivized from publishing their code or actually doing research at all. So this, as every other additional constraint on research, is going to help the large corporations with lots of money. And maybe that's just my opinion, but we should be able to just talk about a problem and the solution to it without always having to make sure that we rabble down all the different things that 
are and might be wrong according to the canon. And big props to Jan Lacan here for holding his own. 90% of people by now would probably be like, oh yes, I'm so sorry, I did a not thoughtful comment, blah blah blah. Props to you, Jan. Keep going. And with that, I conclude this section. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.